Today on Home Built Workshop, it's out with the old and in with the new. It's time to replace my old neck carving buck with a brand new one. This is gonna make final sanding and shaping of guitar necks a little bit easier. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Home Built Workshop. Today we're talking about guitar building tools and jigs. I have here in front of me the neck buck that I currently use to hold my guitar necks when I'm doing finished sanding, final carving, basically any of the handwork that's associated with getting a neck shaped. This was never really an official project. It's really mainly been an experiment along the way. I needed something to hold the neck, to be able to clamp the neck to, and that can be secured to the table. And while this thing has served its purpose, I've used it enough now to know some of the changes that I want to make. So let's take a closer look at this. I'll explain to you kind of what I have here and what changes I want to make, and then we're going to make a new one. So this neck buck is made to hold a guitar neck in place. You can clamp it down on the ends while you're doing your finished sanding or final carving, any transitions. For this one, I have several holes drilled in here and that's to accommodate different clamps in different places. I've also got some holes drilled in the ends where I can put a clamp in and clamp it down to the table or I can clamp it to the neck. And I think I wanna keep that idea to be able to clamp from the ends as well, but I also, don't really have a great base on this. Once it's clamped down using these holes, it's pretty stable, but I think I wanna have some tabs on the ends to give me some more options as far as clamping. And for a little more extra stability, I also wanna have a board screwed to the bottom so that I can also clamp it along the way if I need to. I think it's just gonna make it overall a little bit more stable. This one was kinda hard unless you use several clamps to get it clamped down to the table, it would still wobble around if you were carving on it. Now this one was made from really a scrap of a pallet. It's just something I had on hand at the time and it's all open in the middle. So the neck is supported at either end, but if you really get to press it on there, it will flex the neck. So I don't wanna have such a big open space on the new one. I do need to have some recesses at the first and 12th fret so that I can get in there with some calipers to make my measurements, but I don't think I need this all open down through the middle. Another thing I tried on this one was adding this little block that I can pull out and switch to either side, and that's really so I can clamp the neck the opposite direction. This block really just accommodates for the thickness difference between the headstock and the heel. I like this idea. I want to keep something similar to this on the new one so that I can still have a removable block. That way I don't have to worry about which way I clamp the neck in. I don't really have a great way in my little shop to be able to work cleanly around either side. So being able to flip it around and still keep the same alignment is kind of nice. I think I'll still have several holes drilled in some locations on the new one. It is kind of nice once in a while to be able to add a different clamp for one reason or another. So I think I'll continue something similar to this as well as the holes on the end. One other thing that I wanna change is the height. This is not really that tall once you have it clamped to a table. And a lot of times if you're filing or carving, your file is running into the table. You don't have a lot of work to get in there, hitting your hand on the table. And I think I'm gonna increase the height on this by at least a couple of inches. That should give a lot more clearance. I've got this piece of elm here that I was gonna use for a guitar body, but it is a little bit rotted, kind of punky down here at the end. So we'll trim that off, which is not gonna leave enough good material for a guitar body, but it is gonna leave plenty of material to build this jig. And for the base, you guessed it, another piece of elm. This one's about an inch thick. We're gonna have to get rid of this live edge, get us a nice square board out of here. It's gonna work awesome. What's up with this pencil? Looks like it was sharpened by beavers. Oh well.
Now I'm going to start laying out my cuts on this larger piece. I know that I need to trim off some waste on either end, so most of my work is going to be somewhere here in the middle. I've marked out the length of my neck. I know this is the minimum that I want it to be. I actually think that'll work good. I think that's how we're going to start out anyway. I'm going to make this cut with the table saw and then take this little piece off with the bandsaw. And now I'm going to mark out the location of both the 1st and the 12th fret so that I can make some small cutouts to allow me to get in there and make some measurements. These locations don't have to be super exact, I'm just eyeballing it. And here's the two areas where I need to remove the material. Those tabs are already coming in handy. Now I think we can start drilling some holes in here which will accommodate some clamps. I'm going to start by drilling some inch and an eighth holes in the end and that will be able to slide the clamps in and secure the neck at either end. I'm also going to drill some different holes in different locations here. Some of them will be for clamping this down to a table if for some reason I can't or don't want to use these tabs on the end. And I'm going to put a few across the top as well just for different clamps. They'll be able to slide in the hole in different locations for whatever I might need them for. Once I have all the holes drilled, I'll use a 45 degree chamfer bit to chamfer all the holes as well as the outer edges of the jig. kind of a nice height for leaning on. It's a resting bench. You got notches for your arms so your arms don't slip out. Yeah, it's kind of comfortable. <laughs> but alas, we gotta finish this. So now I've got the piece clamped back to the table. It actually is feeling really solid. I almost think that maybe the base is not necessary. I'm still going to go ahead and do that though, but we're going to do that in just a second. Right now, what I want to do is use this. This is basically a reverse radius block. Instead of having the guitar neck radius this way, it's the opposite and it's bowed this way. I'm going to sand a very small radius on the top. This is probably not necessary, but my thinking is if I give it a little bit of a dish, it'll help hold the neck a little bit more firmly instead of just being a flat surface and then trying to clamp the guitar neck to it, which already has a radius. Now, if we look close at this, you can see that there's a slight radius down the center. Again, I don't think this is 100% necessary, but I do think that it's something that I want to try. And the main reason is because when I'm at the final shaping stage of making my necks, typically I've got the fretboard already radiused and the frets installed. I like to do all that while the neck is still square. That way I can get it nice and flat when I'm using my fret press. And then the last thing that I do is the final shaping. So again, my thought is that maybe having a little bit of a cradle in there for the curved frets to sit in might help keep it a little bit more stable. Time will tell as to whether or not this step is worth it, but I feel like it's going to help just a little bit. If you're building a jig like this and you don't want to do that, I really don't think it's going to make or break your jig whether you include that or not. So now 
I think we need to do everyone's favorite task and sand. Now I can mark the length of the base, cut that down to size, and then I'm going to cut a thin strip of wood that's going to fill in this gap underneath the headstock. Right now, if we try to clamp this down, since it's not flush with the surface, there's a chance we could bow the neck. We don't want to do that. Now I'm going to drill a hole right in the center of that spacer block. I'll clamp it in place where it's going to fit on the jig, and then I can drill a matching hole right in the jig. Now I've got this little short piece of dowel, I'm just going to glue that into this spacer, and then that way it'll be able to be removed and swapped to either side or removed altogether. I'm going to set this aside, let that glue dry for a minute. I'm going to attach this base to the rest of the jig. I'm only using screws, no glue to attach the bottom. The main reason really is that I can kind of future-proof this thing. If I find out later on that the base maybe gets in the way or I need to change some dimensions, maybe this thing is too tall, I need to slice a little bit off or maybe even raise it some more, it's going to be really easy to remove the bottom and make whatever modifications I need to and then I can just reattach it quick and simple. So overall, that completes the jig, except there's a couple of last minute details, just some aesthetic things that I want to take care of really quick. Let's try this trick that a lot of other people seem to have good success with. It's never worked for me before, but we're going to try it again. You ready? It didn't work. It's still the same. That trick never works for me. How do these guys do that? If you guys know the secret, leave it down below in the comments. What I'm going to do, I'm going to spare you the details, glue on a couple pieces of leather across the top to act as a pad when you have the guitar neck clamped in place. Then I'm going to wipe on a nice coat of, you guessed it, boiled linseed oil. And then we'll try this again. No, we won't. There it is. Through the magic of television, we now have a nice coat of boiled linseed oil applied. This thing is ready to be put to use. Let me show you really quick how you might use a jig like this. So when it comes time for final shaping, we'll be able to place our neck on the jig here. I've got the removable piece right now at this end. We'll put that in place, clamp the neck in place, and since we have this little riser block here, we're not gonna put any bow or any sort of warping into the neck. It's gonna hold it nice and flat. Now we can do our sanding, shaping, whatever carving. You could even carve the entire neck this way. I've done several of them like that before I built the router jig and it really works nice. I think the thing that I'm most excited about with this jig is the fact that it's quite a bit taller than my old one. You have plenty of room for sanding and carving and filing without worrying about hitting your hands on the table. Speaking of the table, we also have a ton of options as far as securing this to the table. We can use this base to clamp it down. We could even use these holes along here to clamp it down as well as the tabs on the side. I think this is going to be a lot more versatile and overall just work a ton better than my old one. Let me know down below in the comments your thoughts on this jig. I hope this gives you maybe some ideas, some suggestions, maybe a starting point if you're looking at building a jig like this. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time. Uh -huh.